This is video 140, the restoration of Lancaster NX611 at East Kirby. We're going to slightly off course because this one is about the Merlin engines, but this Merlin engine will be fitted to Tony Agar's Mosquito. The port side engine on the Mosquito going through the winter service. Engineers found the seals had gone around the cylinder block. They hit a problem when removing the block to enable them to fit the new seals. The long studs were corroded and had to be cut off, so the engine now requires special attention at Morris Hammonds. On February the 8th, 2018, a Merlin 25 was delivered to the centre. This engine, built by Rolls-Royce factory about 70 years ago and never used. The engine is going to be fitted to Tony Agar's Mosquito HGA711. Andrew gave a talk on the arrival of the new Merlin. It's all built back up. Again, I'll talk you through that, that side. Um, stood this side because we stood beside um, the Merlin 25 engine. This is the uh, most recent acquisition for the centre. Some of you may have seen on the website and on social media about us going to get it. A little bit of a recap about this engine. Um, we were approached in January by somebody in Switzerland asking if we wanted to, to purchase a Merlin 25 engine. Uh, never touched, never modified, never opened up, so it's kind of like a time capsule. It's uh, the most original engine that we've ever seen. It's very rare to find an engine where all the serial numbers correspond from, <coughs> from nose to end, so to speak. But um, yeah, it's basically as it was uh, produced from the factory, put on the test bed, test run, packaged up, sent out, and never touched since. So how much was that then? Um, <coughs> that cost us £28,000. It's worth. Yeah. I don't know. Anyone wants to pay, uh, yeah. and all it depends how you view it. If you went to buy any Merlin engine from anybody that wasn't. This video covers a small part of the setting up of the two magnetos. The magnetos they're working on is the port side, covering the plugs nearest the outlet valve. These are set at 45 degrees before top dead centre. Engineers Brennan Martin talk us through the work setting up the magneto and the downpour. So well, this is going on the Mosquito, this engine, is it? It is yes. indeed. That's the plan. Yeah. After 60, 70 years of waiting. 70 years of waiting, it's finally going to get used. This isn't the Switzerland one, it is, is it? Swiss yeah. engine. Oh, is it? Yeah. It oh, is. and it was due for a Mosquito, wasn't it? It was due for this very type of Mosquito, yes. Yeah. What, what better aeroplane than this because this is the aeroplane it should have been fitted to. Yeah. The 25s were only fitted to Mosses, but they're not bad. They have you got a lot to do to get it up yes. to? Yeah. yeah, we've had a fair bit of work, and Brad? Brad's already done the runs. Yeah. And it, it's, it's all itty bitty stuff we've had to do as well, Brad, wasn't it? Yeah, Will the seals on that be? Uh, we or that's what we tested yesterday. We, we oh. went to the BBMF yesterday and borrowed some pressure test kit from them, some adapters and such like, um, and we pressure tested both blocks to see if there were any leaks, and we were happy to report that there weren't. Good. Which is why when Brad's just spotted this bit of coolant dribbling down here, he went, Ugh! but it's actually, because these are just plastic, yeah. and there is some coolant in here. Um, these are just plastic, and obviously they're not a very good seal, so it's dripping out of there. Yeah. We, we left we left the pressure equipment on it for quite a considerable length of time and there was yeah. no appreciable pressure drop at all, was it, Brad? So. No, no, after we did uh, seal that. Yeah. No, that's right. Right. Turn back through 20 odd degrees. Right. And then come forward again. Okay. Going forward again. Going it's probably gone slightly past Brad, but if we're still early, then we're still early. Keep going. No, no, I mean, keep going. We're nowhere near it. 
Oh, we're on. Yeah, we're early again. Still early, Black. Yeah. These now, magnetos, are one of those things that will either take 10 minutes or 10 hours. Yes. It's, it's fitted to the side of the engine using what's referred to as a vernier drive. Which basically means you've got a shaft with teeth on each end that drive the, mass, the, the mag from the, the gearing in the rear of the engine. Yes. But one side has 11 teeth and the other has 12. So you can obviously by doing you, this, yeah, like a you can change the relationship yeah. and it's about 0.9 degrees um, each, each variation you can have. Yeah. Um, but obviously, as Brad tells you, they are quite fiddly to do. Yeah. And sometimes you can end up going back into the same place about yeah. ten times. Yeah. Or and each mag's got to be done individually. Yes, yeah, the two mags are completely individual and they're handed as well, so you've got a left hand mag and a right exhaust and an inlet mag basically. Yeah. And today we're doing Rotax mags. Rotax mags. There's two mags normally, BTH and Ro Rotax. The BTH mags are what? The lamp tends to run, or does yeah. run, but... Uh, Rota is that just the name of the maker? That's the manufacturer, manufacturer. BTH stands for British Thompson Houston Company. Yeah. So they made one set and Rotax made the other. Yeah. BTH are a better man. Yeah. And can you interchange them? Oh, yes. You can. On, on that engine we're running a BTH on the exhaust, uh, on the inlets, and a Rotax on the inlets, on the exhaust. Yeah, there's no, they're fitting exactly the same yeah. way. Um, the harness, the ignition harness is fitting exactly the same. So yeah. consequently, they are interchangeable in the event of, yeah. you know, you having to fit either yeah. or. VTH mags are actually yeah. better mags than Rotax. Yeah. They, they perform a lot better at lower RPM. Yeah. They're so alleged to give a stronger spark at lower speeds, yeah. effectively. Yeah. But they don't make any difference to the aircraft's performance once you're in, or shouldn't do, yeah. once you're in flight mode. Yeah. But there is there is a theory that they provide a stronger spark initially when you're turning the engine over. Yeah. So they start and run slightly better at lower RPM. Yeah. So if this was done 70 years ago at Rolls-Royce, surely the mags should be pretty close, shouldn't they? Oh, so the mags that were on it, have been on it since manufacturing. We've got no idea if they're any good. We've no different mags. We know no good ones. Are. Yeah. Same with the harnesses. Yeah. So these these. Oh, these what the, oh yeah, the spark Yeah. Because we know they work. So ne next comes the question: Why don't you see if the mags work when you run it? Because they're a nightmare to change. Yeah. When they're on the air. Yeah. yeah. Particularly, yeah. see the inlet one is buried right in the wing. Yeah. 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 You see. Where it is here, you can imagine that that's not an easy thing to get at. To, to get at. Yeah. And, and you have to take it right out to turn the drive and put it back. And then you're coming round underneath here to check the timing angulus on the bottom of the engine. And you've got to turn the prop. You've got to check it here as well. And yeah. obviously, when it's in situ, that's, it's quite, quite a fit. Yeah. I have done it because we've had to do it in yes. the past and it's, 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 not so, some, it's not something you choose to do willingly, is it? Right? There's a lot of swearing. Yeah. So it's far easier to do it on the ground yeah. with the engine here where we haven't even got bearers and things in the way. No. Um, get the timing right here yeah. and then... Yeah. Right, start tapping it. Closer. Closer, so we're going in the right direction, Brad Lurie. Yeah. Good Lurie. Do you want me to leave it there while you adjust? Yeah. Okay, leave it there while you adjust. No, there's these these mags have a nasty habit because you have to turn them. They've given you a chuffing great belt through the fingers as well. Yes. Oh, do so they? You've got yeah. to be a bit concentrated. Because they can go off. Yeah. Stored up in, in the capacity. Yeah. It, it, it generates a spark and yeah. you're on the earth. <laughs> Hold your breath. Yeah. Whoa. 
we're on the A of the MA. So we're about eight of an inch four. Maybe, no, maybe a quarter. Ooh. Slightly early then, Brad. Advanced ignition timing. Yes, sir. Or do you move it round just another two? Yeah. Yeah, I'll show you on the other side. How, how, the method, how it actually works, no, just give me a sec. Not to do your fang. Ready to do my fang. Now keep going. Tap tap. Yeah, go on. Slowly. Right, leave it there. That's right on the on the cusp, isn't it, Brad? Right, gentle tap. Gentle tap. The points are just, look, just rubbing, Brad. Your water fell off. Yeah, it's no closer than that. That's the thing. Almost bang on, plus points get light. Should still be lined up. I'm, I'm not familiar with it, it is, yeah. That's the timing annulus in there. Uh, I've got a good shot of it, but whether I've got anything. It might be too exposed, but that's basically so you get the, yeah. that, that pointer. Almost bang on, plus points get light. So, yeah, but you know what I mean? That's what I mean, though, Brad. Yeah. You've been set. Oh, no, but it hasn't been, it was set last year. Yeah, but that's what that I mean. Yeah. It's not been I will, funny. I will double check it. We're, we're, uh, on, on some of the stuff I used to do, Brad, when you find to, to fine tune it, there'll be a tolerance on the points gap of say plus or minus two thousand or something like that. Yeah. And I mean, you, you know, a thousand either way could give you a, a, a degree on the ignition timing. Plus or minus one on this. Plus or minus one. Yeah. So that's what I mean. You know, you're in tolerance, Brad. Well, in tolerance. Oh, well, in tolerance. Yeah, you don't need to adjust it. I'm no, just saying. No. I'm just trying to work out in your head what it will give you. So what you've got now. Is that your actual drive coupling, which this end sits in the engine in the wheel case there, which is driven by a skew gear that comes off a uh, crankshaft. And they had a number of failures of these, which ended up in Alex Henshaw putting a Spitfire in somebody's back garden. Um, but I digress. And this bit engages with the drive on the back of the mag. So you put that in there. If you set the mag to the right point, stick it on. Uh, sorry, set the engine to the right point, set the mag to the right point, stick it on. 
take the engine back through 25 degrees, connect your box, bring it forward, and whenever the thing starts beeping, you then check in the timing annulus where the crank is relative to the mag. And you then, whether you're early or late, you can adjust it by turning, yeah. by using these Not teeth in there. It's a big adjustment though, isn't it? Right? Well, it's, no, it, it, it's, a, it's a tenth of an inch on the timing because, angle. Because, Nev, don't forget, one end's got 11 teeth, the other's got 12. Oh. So what happens is, it, 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 they're all equally spaced. So if you move that 11 teeth, one of these will be fractionally out, and then when the mag goes on, you, the mag should go the correct way. Yeah, I think, think it's a 12, I think, yeah. yeah. And that's right, you just move it round. You've got a, a coarse adjustment on this and a fine on the engine, effectively. Yeah. That's why you have to check it, because if it goes the other way, you've gone away from where you want it. So that, that relative movement then gives you 0.9 degrees, yeah. I think it is, isn't yeah. it, in, yeah. in total. Yeah. Uh, down there, yeah. so that's what you do, yeah. and that's what Bradley was just doing. You just you just move it round one tooth and put it back, and, and it's the relative movement because the, the, the problem can occur if you take the mag out and the damn drive comes out with it. You've lost. You can go off and lose where you were so, relatively. Yeah. It, it does say that you can mark where you start. Yeah. So you put a mark on there and a line on there. Yeah. So you make sure it goes back in the correct position yeah, put, to put, save put, you all the trouble. Of course, yes, exactly. It always makes it more awkward if the drive comes out with the mag. If it stays put, it's you, worse, it makes it easier. You tend to find the drive will come out the engine when the engine's fitted because you've got to take the mag off at an awkward angle to clear everything. So it if you can pull take the mag out. off straight, it's much easier. Yeah. Oh. And then you've got the devil's own job trying to get the hardware on because you can't get your fingers in. Again, brother. The next, you get the devil's own job of putting the hardware back on because you can't get your fingers in. Oh no. No, you know, Marty. You mean these, he means the, all these nuts and washers are really difficult to get at. Yeah. You know, partic particularly these two when, you, when you're trying to get in because once the mag's here, well, you've had a look the other side now. Yeah. You have a look where the mag is. Yeah. You know, sir. Oh, I see, yeah. I see what you that, mean. That, it isn't easy to get in. That back one over there is even more difficult. And of course, you don't want to be dropping anything because that becomes FOD. Yeah, as I've just done. It'll be there somewhere, Brad. No, I didn't hear it plop into the bucket. No. Oh. Is that the nut, Brad? Yeah. Just still in the socket? <laughs> nah. No. I did actually feel it go. Dangerous place, then. It can't, it can't have fallen inside the engine, no, there's nothing else. But oh, if there it was is. Up... Oh, oh, no, it's not. Oh, it's... Yeah. It's not, it didn't fall in there then, Bradley. No, well, I didn't hear it splosh. So to come out, it would have had to have gone either. Oh, and... there it is. It's on top of that drive. Well done, Brad. I'll see where the rest of the bits on up in the aircraft. <laughs> oh, it's a nightmare. Yeah. It really is. Oh, well, yeah, this is a job that's. Yeah. Um, this and is if you have to change your inlet harness, which is yeah. this one, you have to take the mags off anyway, so it makes the job about 50 times longer. Yeah. Is this the inlet? The inlet. This is the exhaust. Spark? This is the exhaust. This is the exhaust, is it? Yeah, the, the inlet. The inlet harness runs up here and the mag's here, but the exhaust harness, because the exhaust are obviously on the outside of the engine, you've got a branch of harness either side, but this one has to go all the way through here. And if the magneto's here, it's, it's nigh on impossible to get it out, particularly if the engine is on the wing. Okay, it's it, it's difficult to do, but it can be done. But on the mosquito, particularly this side, because of the way the wing, if you can imagine the the, the, the the that front leading section of that wing there yes. is around here, right? Yeah. So you try to get this to go through here, and bear in mind that section's fixed. Yeah. It it, it can't swing. There's not enough room for it to swing. To, to go, go through. through. Yeah. 
So you have to take the magneto off. And of course you've seen Neville how tight that is in there. Yeah. Yeah, okay. it is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, very little but, room. But, but of course, because they're symmetrically opposite in terms of the aeroplane, but the engine isn't, right? So on this side, the harness comes through, but then it hits the wing this side. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because the engines are not symmetrical. No. Okay. No. So what happens is, what you, there are some things like this you can do on one side of the aeroplane, you can't do on the other. Yeah. Because of the, just physically, because the aeroplane's the other way around, as it were. Can I use your special socket of water? Oh, of course. Video A15 and A16 covers the restoration of the Lancaster NX611, covers the arrival of the Merlin and Andrew's talk. I have posted the link in the description box.